Hello, everybody. I hope you all are well. My name is Sean Wasonga, and I am a product manager with the Microsoft CXC Cloud Ecosystem Security Team. I have the pleasure of talking to you today about Microsoft Defender for Cloud, in specifically how you can manage it as code. I'm not alone on this journey. I have my colleague Boyan. And before I proceed, I'll actually introduce, allow him to introduce himself. Then we can proceed. Boyan, over to you. Thank you, Sean, and hi all. Boyan here, Program Manager with Microsoft for Defender for Cloud. I'm looking forward to speaking to you today about this topic. Amazing. So, Boyan, uh, you know, it's always good to answer the question of why. So, why do you think we're essentially here and why are we doing this video? Well, we heard from organizations that are adopting Microsoft Defender for Cloud, as well as from our partner ecosystem like MSSPs, that they really need our help in understanding how to use things like infrastructure as code to deploy and manage Microsoft Defender for Cloud. And that's why we are here to share this knowledge with all of you. So you said organizations broadly, right? So is this something that particularly we are focusing for our customers or our partners? Who basically does this benefit? The great thing is everyone really, because both our customers as well as our partners use Microsoft Defender for Cloud, and both of them are able to get real value out of what we're going to be sharing here today. Great. So one of the core concepts around managing Defender for Cloud as code is infrastructure as code. So my question is, why are we actually using ISC at all for this? Well, infrastructure as code or ISC uh, has a lot of advantages, one of which is it allows you to describe the desired state of your public cloud infrastructure using things like templates in, that can be in BICEP, Terraform, CloudFormation, and in others. You can then use version control like Git to track changes made to those templates. And this is beneficial because after changes are made to your infrastructure as code or IS templates, you can then programmatically deploy these changes to your public cloud environment using tools like GitHub Actions. So that sounds exciting. You know, we have you know visibility of these templates and we're using uh, whatever specific you know a solution to use that, whether it's BISOP, Terraform, CloudFormation, etc. I'm particularly interested in how you programmatically deploy these changes. And you did mention GitHub Actions, which I believe we'll be showing a bit later on. My question for you is, is there any other uh, solution I can use outside of GitHub Actions to basically do this? Of course, while we use GitHub Actions to give you a sense of how this looks like, as well as because our infrastructure as code templates are in GitHub, you can also use other tools like Azure DevOps or ADO and even non-Microsoft tooling. Great to hear that. This all sounds exciting. So I'm really interested to see how, uh, you know, the different folks who are watching this video can get started. How can we do that? Uh, look, we published an article to help folks get started on this journey uh, with deploying and managing Defender for Cloud as code using infrastructure as code. Uh, the article is publicly accessible and provides step-by-step -step guidance on how to do all of this. Additionally, what we also did is we went ahead and we set up a public GitHub repository containing example workflows that you can use as a starting point to then automate the deployment uh, to your Azure environment using GitHub Actions. And we wouldn't be here if we didn't feel that communities make more possible, which is why you're free to leverage the GitHub repository we set up, but also feel free to contribute to it. That sounds great. And I'm really interested in going towards the next phase where we'll be demoing how you can pro programmatically deploy and manage your Defender for Cloud leveraging GitHub Actions. Look forward to what it. That's next. All right, the first thing that you are required to do is create a new service principle. We're going to do that via uh, the Azure uh, CLI. We're going to use PowerShell. To do that, it's very simple. Uh, you use the new um, Azure service principle. I've already written it down. Um, that's how basically my service principle is actually going to be called. On some done, I press uh, enter and it should basically generate for me the service principle. 
once that is done i need to proceed towards the next action which would be to collect um, the service principal uh, details how to do that it's very simple the next action would be collecting uh, the service principal details and we actually are credentials which we're actually going to store into github actions for us to leverage uh, the automation process to do that we have a script that we already shared within the documentation as you already stated we're basically going to be pushing it directly into what's um your um, azure powershell environment as you can actually see the script and it should basically generate for you an output where it showcases for you all the defined details as you actually see here now these details of course are masked uh, but if you follow the exact uh, uh, processes you should be able to see it in your environment as well so just to recap what we have done we have created a service principle we identified the credentials and then we have basically copied those credentials now the action which we want to do here is store those service principle credentials in our github repository as you can actually see i forked this uh, from the original repository and for you to store uh, the secrets it's you going towards settings going towards secrets and basically deploying um, the secret as you can remember we've just done it similar towards what we did um, in the documentation all these uh, directions are basically available so if you should follow that you should have been able to create the service principle and stored uh, the credentials directly into github we're moving on towards the next step which will be around the github actions all right so the next step that you would need to do is basically fork um, the following repository into your own github repository as we have created this already you need to go to omagusi mbca code and fork it into your own github repository what we have done here is we have generated different workflows and scripts that you can actually use for your overall automation process as you can actually see here and it's actually been the link has actually been shared in the document blog and it's also be shared in the video as well so what you're actually going to be using is the enabling plans and the process which you're actually going to be leveraging is leveraging github actions for the automation process so if i click over towards the enabled plans yaml file you can see we've basically generated a script that will allow you to through the service principal credentials that you've created go towards your defender plan and actually enable all the defender plans very simply and for you to actually action it it's very simple um, if you follow the steps correctly you already have the other service credentials the secrets etc all you need to do is leverage the following script as is once you go through it ensure that everything is in line within your environment all you need to do is just commit the new changes in towards the main branch and once you do that you can move over towards actions and you can actually see it defined running and just to take you through the process this is my current environment you can actually see all my server plans are currently off if I move over towards GitHub Actions and I specifically go towards that specific workflow, move towards the build environment. Oops, sorry, it's the wrong one. One second.
we'll go over towards this enablement plan going towards the build environment as you can actually it's going towards the different spots stops uh, the different actions based off of the script we're logging in to azure we're updating security contact details we're enabling the defender plans they enable app service plans the storage the dns service plans everything as well so we have basically put everything in towards the repository for you to for you to use once it's done you can move over towards your github page sorry your defender for cloud page and if you click over in towards a simple refresh on the plans page you should automatically see them enabled you just give it a second as you can actually see everything that we set across has now been enabled and that's how it works